Welcome back to TCM, everyone. I'm Jacqueline Stewart, coming to you from the Director's Inspiration Agnes Varda exhibition. And I'm joined by Matt Severson, director of the Margaret Herrick Library. Hello, Matt. Hello, Jacqueline. So the next Varda film we're going to talk about is Le Bonheur from 1965. And this is a really complex film about an affair, we could say, but it's much more layered than that. Right. I think the way to look at it, if Claire from 5 to 7 is about death or the idea of death, this is the idea of happiness. What is happiness? And so a stylistic difference between the first film and this is that this is in color, beautiful color. I think Varda's stylistic contributions have sometimes been ignored. Her use of color is extraordinary in this. And I think that Varda is almost playing with cliches at the time. What is the perfect family? You have a husband and wife, the lead actor and actress mm -hmm. are real life husband and wife and their real children. Again, she's breaking down the boundaries between reality and fiction. And they seem to be living this idyllic life in the countryside. Mm -hmm. What we would almost think of as commercial snapshots of what a, you know, in a shampoo commercial yes. would be. Yes. But then the, the man who seems to have everything meets a young postal worker a blonde woman who looks a lot like his wife. He has an affair with her. He falls in love with her. He doesn't also see anything wrong with that. And as Varda says, he's adding happiness on happiness. Oh. And I won't give spoilers away, but things happen. And I think the best way to describe this may be from Varda herself, who described this movie as a beautiful peach with a worm inside. Mm, that sort of darkness inside of happiness that she's exploring that's there, right. right yes that's right yes. and this it's good to maybe note that this film was controversial at the time of its release there were a lot of people that were offended that varda was not making more of a social commentary about what was going on i won't give anything away but there there is some controversy uh, about the film that we can maybe talk about yes, after yes absolutely but maybe we can talk more about the way that varda is describing in this film how men experience or pursue happiness in relation to the way that women understand or experience happiness there's a real sort of gendered understanding of I, this i think so and i think that varda is kind of putting the wife into very conventional roles she's looking after the kids yeah. she's also looking very beautiful throughout the film and again i think that there is satire in here as much as it is also just strikingly beautiful. And yes, I think that it's very gendered. I mean, we're definitely seeing this through his point of view, yes. through most of it. Yeah. And we recognize Le Bonheur in this exhibition as well. That's right. It almost, I think, gets its own wall uh, <laughs> behind me. There is the large French poster for it. There are off-camera photographs for it, as well as Varda's journals. One of the wonderful things that we saw when we were going through the archive is the meticulous detail that Varda would take, uh, essentially a, a production diary of sorts. Mm -hmm. Her notes, she would insert film frames. There are sunflowers in there. Um, her writing is very neat and precise and tidy. And then the piece de resistance in the Le Bonheur area is this three-dimensional model of one of her cinema shacks mm -hmm. from what we call Varda's third life. Her first life is photography, second life, film, third life as a visual artist who was doing installations around the world mm -hmm. in the last 15, 20 years of her life. And this cinema shack, it's a wire structure and what covers it is reels of film, celluloid from Le Bonheur. Yes. And in the center of this shack are sunflowers. And as you will see in Le Bonheur, sunflowers are a major visual motif of the film. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Matt Severson. Thank you, Jacqueline. Let's take a look. From 1965, here is Agnès Varda's Le Bonheur. 
Back with me here at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures to talk about Le Bonheur is the director of the Academy's Margaret Herrick Library, Matt Severson. So Matt, the end of this film is jarring. Yes, if the film seems unsettling, I think that that is Varda's point, mm -hmm. uh, essentially. And that her idea behind the film, one of her ideas, you know, what is happiness? And also, I think Varda had this idea that in a patriarchal society, especially at that time, um, she had this idea that for men, it was very easy for a man to have a wife, leave that wife, find another partner, mm -hmm. and move forward, and that women could be discarded. And I think she is telling, having that idea, showing that idea in a very unique way. The husband is so happy in love with his new mistress that he thinks that his wife is going to share that enthusiasm and that their life can continue in this menage a trois. And at first the wife seems to be accepting of that. And then she's found drowned in the river, but it is never really resolved in the narrative if she went for a swim or if she purposely drowned herself. And the film doesn't seem that concerned with that. After, you know, some bits with the family and the funeral of the wife, he picks up again with the postal worker mm -hmm. and she kind of assumes the role of the new wife. That's right, and mother. And the film ends with them walking happily into the countryside mm -hmm. and there is no moral finger waving in sight. Mm -hmm. It's just a statement. Mm -hmm. And um, I think rightfully so, it leaves some spectators a little unsettled at the end. Yes. Well, in addition to that kind of uh, thematic controversy, I guess we could say, there are also some really radical things that she's doing in terms of the film's visual style, yeah. like those tableaus in the sex scenes that are really, I mean, I've, I don't think I've really seen another filmmaker prior to Varda represent bodies in that way. I think that's so true. And I think we should also say again, a woman behind the camera. It's, I think that her approach to these sex scenes is extremely stylized. They seem almost like they're still lives, though you can, in every shot, there's like a finger moving. She's really holding them still. and. I would say that there are antecedents to other filmmakers that came later. Mm -hmm. I can think of in Gus Van Sant's My Own Private Idaho, mm -hmm. he does something very similar with his sex scenes as well. Um, and I would also say, again, her formal use of color is quite unique. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the 1950s and 60s, a lot of the great auteurs are coming to color for the first time, and Varda, kind of takes to it like a real master. Mm. Cause she's, I mean, there are, it's a riot of colors on screen. And then in the transitions from one scene to the other, she will kind of, instead of fading out or fading to black or fading to white, she's fading into fuchsia, mm -hmm. she's fading into blue. And then in the center of the film, she does a triptych of sorts where she fades into the colors of the French flag, blue, white, and red in sequence. Part of it is playful, and part of it, I think, speaks to the film's themes of beauty and subjectivity and what is happiness, what is beauty. Yes, thanks so much, Matt. Please stay here, because coming up next, we have a short documentary that Varda made about the Black Panther Party.